Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about simple harmonic motion. One thing you should know about this topic is that it can really be split up into three parts. The part that I'm going to be covering in this video is conservation of energy, and then I'll talk about the other two parts, which are the equation for simple harmonic motion, and then we have frequency and period. And again, I'll cover those two topics in a different video, but today I'm just going to be focusing on conservation of energy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate what's going on here. We basically have a spring and I'm going to draw five springs for us today. Each one represents the spring at a different point in time. And at first, let's say the spring is fully compressed. Let's say the rest length is somewhere over here down the middle for every diagram. And so this is the first spot when it's fully compressed a distance I'll call x max. It's the max stretch distance x. And then for the next point I have, the spring is going to be a little closer towards the middle. Then in the middle picture, it's exactly in the middle. Then after some point in time, we've now passed it a little bit. And then in the last picture, we're going to be at the max stretch distance again, but this time on the opposite side of the rest length. So one more time, this dashed line down the middle is the rest length. And so here's what I want you to think about as this spring goes from fully compressed to fully stretched, and then it's going to go back and forth forever. But what I want you to think about is the energy. Like for instance, what kind of energy do I have in picture one? Well, in that case, it's going to be all spring potential energy, one half kx squared. I call it us as my symbol. And keep in mind that at this point, the velocity is zero. In other words, it stopped momentarily. Then in the next picture, I have a mix of energy. That's going to be us plus k. It's got both energies combined. Then in the third picture, I'm going to be moving with my max velocity, meaning it's going to be all kinetic, all k, one half mv squared. And this is where I'm going to have my max velocity, which I usually call vmax. Then the next point in time, we have the mixed case again. That's going to be when we have spring energy plus kinetic energy like this. And then in the final picture, when I'm fully stretched again, it's going to be all spring energy again, and the velocity is zero. And there's our full picture. Keep in mind that all five of these scenarios are equal to each other for their values. Meaning at point one, when I have all spring potential energy, that's going to equal the middle one when it's all kinetic energy. So in other words, one half K X max squared is going to be equal to one half M V max squared. And again, that's because the energy in the system is a constant. I can also say a third equivalency. I can say it's equal to one half K X squared plus one half M V squared. And that is true only if the velocity and the distance are just two random points in the cycle. We're not talking about the maximum. It's just whatever stretch distance you're at, x plus the kinetic energy of whatever velocity you're at, v. So now let's look at an example problem to see what I'm talking about. So here's the first problem. A spring mass system is compressed by 80 centimeters and is allowed to oscillate freely. The mass is 6 kilograms and the spring constant is 200 newtons per meter. What is the maximum velocity of the mass? So here's what I'm going to do. When they tell me it's compressed by 80 centimeters, they're telling me that us, the maximum, in other words, the one half k x max squared, that's going to be one half k, the spring constant is 200, and x max, the 80 centimeters. I can't use centimeters, I got to use meters, so instead I'm going to use point eight meters, I got that by dividing centimeters by a hundred, and then square it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that equal to the kinetic energy maximum, which we know is one half m v max squared, because that's the other point I'm looking at. They wanted me to solve for the maximum velocity. So in other words, the left side of this equation, which I can plug into a calculator, I'll get 64 for the left side, one half times 200 times 0.8 squared. And then on the right side, it's one half times the mass, which is six times V max squared. And then I have everything I need to solve for the velocity. So that means 64 equals one half times six is three V max 
squared. I just divide both sides by three and I'll get 21.3 equals V max squared. Take the square root of both sides and I'll get a maximum velocity of 4.62 meters per second. And that's my answer. That's the fastest speed the spring mass system can reach is 4.62 meters per second. And let's say there's a part B to this problem. Part B, when the velocity of the mass is three meters per second, how far is it from the rest length? So as I mentioned earlier, this is gonna use conservation of energy. I basically have to say that energy at point one, which I have a couple options here for energy at point one. I can either choose the energy when the spring energy was a maximum, or I can choose when the kinetic energy was a maximum. It really doesn't matter because these numbers are equal to each other. But then the second point in time is when the mass's velocity is three meters per second and we want to know how far is it from the rest length. In other words, they're asking for the mix scenario. So I'm going to set either one of these. I'll choose US max probably because it's easier, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to say one half K, which was 200 times X max squared, which was 0.8 squared equals this mix scenario. One half K, which was 200, times X squared. This X we don't know, it's the distance from the rest length, we're solving for this. And then plus one half MV squared, mass is six. The velocity they said was three in the question, so three squared. So as you can see, the energy total for the spring is equal to the mix of kinetic energy plus potential energy that's how I got to solve problems like these. So then simplifying the left side, again, it's 64. Hey, that sounds familiar. Yeah, that's because it's the same number from the previous part A. And then on the right side, this reduces to 100x squared plus 27. And so now all I got to do is solve for x. That means subtract 27 from both sides. I'll get 37 equals 100x squared. Divide by 100, 0.37 equals x squared, and then I just gotta take the square root. And that's gonna give me a final answer of x equals 0.61 meters, or if you like that in centimeters, we can say 61 centimeters by multiplying by 100. Both of these answers are correct. I don't care which one you say, but that's how we solve this problem. Now let's look at just one more to make sure you understand this. A spring mass system undergoes simple harmonic motion. The spring constant is 450 newtons per meter, and the mass is 9.2 kilograms. At some point in time, the mass is 2 meters from the rest length, and its velocity is 5 meters per second. What is the amplitude of the system, and then what is the max velocity? So one thing you should know is the word amplitude here is another word for x max. In other words, we do want the max stretch distance here, which is when we have us max, max spring energy. We also want to find max velocity. That means we're also looking at K max. But the problem is they don't give me the max spring energy or the max kinetic energy. They give me the mix scenario where the mass is two meters from the rest length and its velocity is five meters per second. So in other words, I got to recognize they're giving me the mix, which is one half KX squared plus one half MV squared. The good news is they give me all the numbers here because the spring constant is 450, x is two, because it's two meters from the rest length. The mass, they say, is 9.2, and the velocity is gonna be five meters per second. So if I plug this all in my calculator, I get a final answer of 923. Oh, and the units for this is joules, because we're talking about energy right now. The total energy in the system is 923 joules. Now, if I want to find the amplitude, we can find the amplitude first, it doesn't matter. But I got to set this 923 number, I got to set it equal to the max stretch distance, which would look like this. And so that means 923 equals one half, K is 450 times X max squared. And now I just got to solve for X max. So to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by one half, which really is the same thing as multiplying both sides by two and then dividing by 450. So 923 times two divided by 450 is 4.10. And then I just take the square root and I'll get a max stretch distance of 2.03 meters. 
Now to find the max velocity, I gotta do the same thing, but 923 equals 1 half m v max squared. And so the mass, we said that was 9.2 kilograms times v max squared. And then all I gotta do is multiply both sides by two and divide by 9.2. So that means v max squared is equal to 200.7. And if I take the square root, then the max velocity is 14.2 meters per second. And there's our answer for that one. And again, everything we did today was using conservation of energy. In the next series of videos I make, I'm gonna show you how to use the equation for simple harmonic motion. And we're gonna be talking about period and frequency and angular frequency. So stay tuned for those. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.